<laughs> you know what he was you know what he was saying to me yeah you may have you may have a gift you may have something but it's not the time for it you need a lot of training you need to develop that thing so one so guess what even though God has called me to do what I'm doing right now is to teach his word. I still had to go through a season of preparation. This is all connecting to activating your kingdom assignment because many of us may know what God has called us to do, but you went on the field too soon. Uh-oh. <laughs>
today, on this evening, he's going to speak something to you to help you get activated in his kingdom. In Jesus' name, Father, we love you, we worship you, we magnify your name on tonight, God. Lord God, we magnify your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we just come to you tonight, God, and we just worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, I pray for every disciple that is watching. Father, that they will feel your presence all over the airwaves, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking right now, Lord God, that you will activate us. Give us clarity, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, of the things that you have called for us to do. We love you and we praise you right now, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, I hope you are feeling the presence of the Lord as I am here in the studio. I'm so excited again. I'm Pastor Nathan, uh, Pastor, uh, lead pastor here at Fuel Station Church. We are about to go into night one of the Kingdom Virtual Revival. So I just pray that you have already been uh, seeking God this year. I pray that in the name of Jesus that you are prepared for an amazing, blessed, prosperous year here in 2024. I don't know about you, but I just have a great high anticipation that God is going to do something so special for us in this year. Amen. So listen, we're going to go to our Bibles and I'm just going to ask you right now, wherever you are to get your Bibles, because we got to go over uh, some things in these next three nights. And the whole purpose of this um, revival is that um, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was at the park. And as I was at the park doing my 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 morning prayer walk, the, the Holy Spirit uh, put in my heart to do this three night revival. And um, first, I wasn't going to, you know, I, I was like, OK, I don't know. I was going to do just one night based on what he was telling me. And really what he was sharing with me was he said, I need to get my people in alignment. I need to get my people in order. And what he wants me to do in these next three days, based on what he shared with me, is to be able to encourage every last one of us, including myself, to get in proper alignment because Jesus Christ is soon to come back for his church. He is coming soon, sooner than we think. And one of the things that he has to do is get his pieces of the body in the right place. So we all know that, um, you know, a lot of people have been uh, serving the Lord for years. But um, a lot of times we have never took the time to slow down to really ask the Lord, Lord, am I doing what you really called me to do? And a lot of people are doing things. It looks good. It, it's, it's an amazing work. But the question is, did the Lord activate us to do that? So before we really get into kingdom activation, we got to first understand what it is. We first got to understand what assignment is. We got to first understand and to really check to make sure that what we're doing is uh, being we were being led by the spirit of God, because, again, um, I can share it through many experiences of things that I've done in my past, thinking that it was from the Lord and it was not from the Lord. It was from what I wanted to do. And so um, I know what it's like to be doing something, thinking that, hey, this is a good thing. It's a good thing, but it's not the God thing that he called you to do. So we're going to be talking about that the next three days, because God, again, he's coming back for his church. He's trying to get us in alignment. In 2024, um, I was sharing with the church on this last Saturday that the Lord was showing me that a lot of people in this church is not even prepared for his return. He was showing that a lot of people, they are just they're coming to church services, but they don't really have him as Lord and Savior. And so we got to get back to the basics of making sure that we are prepared to meet him in eternity. Amen. So we're going to go into some scriptures tonight. I pray you get your Bibles. I, I'm, I'm really asking you, please don't just take my word for it. Uh, we got to go to the word of God to see what he is saying. So I'm going to uh, take your attention. Uh, the first thing place we're going to go to is Matthew chapter 16, because everything we're doing is about Jesus. OK, Jesus Christ is the head of the body. He this is his church. Uh, we want to make sure that we are in alignment and in step with what Jesus have ordained for our life. So let's go to Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to ask you to go to Matthew chapter 16 and we're going to go to verse um, 18. We're going to go. We're going to start with Matthew chapter 16 and we're going to go to verse 18. And again, my prayer is that each each and every one of you would um, really hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And so when we start to talk about the different gifts and the different things that um, the, that is given to um, individuals in the body of Christ, uh, we first got to get back to the fundamentals first. So in today's teaching, 
uh, we're going to get back to just the basics of, of this whole kingdom thing, because uh, we're talking about activate your kingdom assignment. So we want to make sure that we're talking about the kingdom's assignment. I mean, there's many assignments out there. You got school assignments. You got assignments uh, from your boss at, job, at, your, at your job. So we're not talking about being activated in those assignments. We're talking about being activated in your kingdom assignment, which means the king has to assign you to do something for his uh, kingdom. And this is what you want to find before he comes back. Because remember, he is going to come back and he is going to ask all of his servants, what did you do for my kingdom? And we have to give an account for the things that he has put us here to do. And so we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Amen. So Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 says, and I say unto you, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we see in verse 18 of, of Matthew 16 that Jesus says, upon this rock, upon this truth, I will build my church. He did not say, you guys are going to build your own churches. He said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against my church church so this is the this is the first thing we got to understand is who is the who church is we are we a part of uh you know i know many of us we're a part of local churches but we got to understand that this is christ's church okay so he is the one who's building this church and so when i was at the park and um i heard the holy spirit say to talk about this some years ago i did a teaching about building wisely and about kingdom contractors and i'm and he put on my heart to kind of revisit that again to kind of help us get an understanding of what activation assignment all of that is and so tomorrow we're going to be going into more detail so you can kind of fine tune what your thing is but today we got to get an understanding of what it is and what we are doing okay so here we understand that he's the one who's going to build his church It's his church that is being built okay so over the last two thousand and something years uh, the Jesus's church has been built. Okay. All right. Start, you know, and if you go to the book of Acts, you can see how it began. And then when we come all the way to the day that we're living and we're still, still souls are still being added to his kingdom. Okay. So, but there's a role, there's a place that me and you fit in this whole thing. And this is what we got to find out because I, I need to bring some clarity to something because one of the things that really did, um, move me when I was, um, in my walk, with the Lord was that he was putting on my heart that a lot of people are doing things that they were not assigned to do. And this is very scary because again, I shared with you earlier that I used to do things. Um, you know, when I first got saved, I was very passionate. I just wanted to go out and do a lot of great things that I believe was good. But guess what? I was not authorized to do it. When I say authorized, I'm talking about from the King. All right. There are some things that all of us um, as the believers, we're supposed to do all of us supposed to share our faith. That is something we all supposed to do. All of us are supposed to go out and share the good news. That is not just left to just the evangelist. Every believer who is in the kingdom, we have a responsibility to go out and win souls for Jesus Christ. That is all of us. Watch this. All of us are, are, uh, it's, it's all of our responsibilities. It's all of our assignments to study the word of God. It's all of our assignments to praise God. It's all of our assignments to worship God. So there are some assignments that we all have that uh, once we come into the king and kingdom and we are one of Jesus's disciples, all of the disciples have certain uh, 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 universal assignments that we do. But in this revival, we want to talk about what your specific one is. There is something that you are supposed to do that nobody else can do. And that's what we got to find out, because guess what? If you don't do that thing, you're going to be uh, you have to stand before the Lord and give an account for why you did not build in his kingdom with in, in the right area. So let me talk a little bit from um, uh, we just read in Matthew 16. So we know that this is Jesus' church. So now I'm going to have you go to Psalms 127. And I just want to show you this because this is something that this is going to begin our teaching tonight. So let's go to Psalms 127. And I just want to show you um, a, a passage of scripture that a lot of times people, um, they know that it's in the Bible, but they don't tend to really study it or read it or understand it. So Psalms 127 verse 1 says this, except the Lord build a house they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it, but in vain. Now, that is a very scary scripture because what it's saying is, except the Lord build the house, 
the laborers labor in vain. And the thing that makes that scripture scary is the fact that it is saying that there are laborers that is building. But the thing is, they could be building in vain. So I don't know about you. I don't want to be building anything in vain. I don't want to be doing anything. And the Lord has not authorized me to do it. So what that scripture is saying is, except the Lord has authorized the, the laborers to build, they are building in vain. That's really what it's, the scripture is saying. So he builds through his people. All right. He's going to build his church through you. He, the church is people. It's not buildings. It's people. And he needs people to be activated so more people can come into his church. This is where you come in at. All right. So when he saved you, when he called you, it is more than, it's so much more than you just going to church every weekend and just and leaping and jumping and, and, and lifting up your hands. He is looking for you to multiply some things for his kingdom. And that's what we got to get activated. All right. So that is in Psalms. 127 verse 1 except the Lord build the house they labor in vain that build it now this is the thing that um he began to share with me so I'm going to give you a couple of analogies that I, I pray that can help you in in this first night because again once we go into some of the other um evenings we want to break down some of the gifts and things like that that you may have so you can really figure out where do I fit in this thing one of the things I love, and my wife can tell you, anybody who knows me can tell you that I love football. I love to watch football. And one of the reasons why I love to watch football is because there's so many amazing analogies, amazing principles when you watch the game of football that I just love. Now, this is the thing that I want to share with you. Now, when it comes to football is that you got one team, one team. All right. Not not five teams. You got one team that got multiple players. OK, so my favorite team is the Buffalo Bills. OK. All right. So this is for many of you know, that's my favorite team, the Buffalo Bills. I'm here in the city of Buffalo, New York. So I love the Buffalo Bills. All right. So you have one team, but then you have different players on the same team. OK, those different players on that same team, they are pretty much, listen, working together for one common goal. OK, so you have a coach. Then you have coaches over certain um, areas of the team. And this is where you got to kind of see the big picture because in the book of Romans, so I'm going to have you go to the book of Romans. I want you to go to Romans chapter 12. Let me show you, uh, show you this as I'm breaking this principle down for you. So let's go to Romans chapter 12 and let me show you this because this is, this is something that I really believe is going to be a blessing to you so you can understand where you fit in this thing. So Romans chapter 12. And I just want to read, um, I'm going to read just first, let's go first four. So it says this, for as we have many members in one body, it says, and all members have the same office. All members have not the same office. Sorry. So we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. That's verse four. Look at verse five. So we being many are one body in Christ and every member every one member one of another so in verse 4 when it says we have many members in one body all members have not the same office so let me break that down in football terms so you can kind of understand what paul is saying to the romans in verse 4 it says for we have many teammates in one team and all teammates have not the same function okay one team different players but they all have different functions. Okay. So you have the defense, uh, the, the defense, you have the offense, you have special teams, you have all of these different people. And then you have your quarterback, then you have your wide receivers, then you have your tight ends, then you have your linebackers, you have all of these things. And guess what? They all have a piece to play on one team. So in, in order for them to be activated in their assignment, they first got to know where they fit on the team. They know they're on the team, but watch this. They just don't have the liberty to just run on the field and do what they want to do. Guess what they have to do? They have to go to the coach. They have to make sure they are clear on what their assignment is because if they're not clear on their assignment, they are going to go on the field and cost the team. Uh oh, they're going to cost the team. They're going to give they're going to cost the team a lot of flags. Many of you, I don't know if y'all remember, but not too long ago, we lost a game. I believe it was to the Denver Broncos. I believe I could be wrong. And what the reason why we lost is because we had an extra man on the field. <laughs> Isn't that something? We had an extra man on the field who was not authorized to be on the field at that time. He is important. 
he he is activated in the kingdom, but he was activated in the kingdom at the wrong time. Meaning when you get your assignment, you just cannot go on the field whenever you feel like going. You got to listen to your coach who is the one who is running the team and wait for the coach to tell you when to go on the field. And this is what the Holy Spirit was sharing with me, that many people is gifted. There are so many people gifted in the kingdom. There are so many people gifted. You're gifted. I'm gifted. We're all gifted. But the problem is Many of us is trying to all be quarterbacks. Many of us is all trying to be linemen. Many of us, um, can you imagine all the linemen, uh, trying to, trying to throw the ball like Josh Allen? Um, you know, if some of them, their jobs are supposed to protect them, but imagine they get jealous and say, man, I'm tired of protecting them. I want to do something else. I want to do something else. Listen to my words. I want to do something else. So when you're on a team, I need to leave. The word I need to leave because you're not on the team for yourself. You're on the team for the whole. This is what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. He's trying to bring us back to the place because every last one of you, yes, you, I know you're thinking, no, not me. I, I, I don't know what my gift is. Trust me, you, he, when he called you, he gave you something for this team. For the Jesus team, he is building his church and you are a key piece in this building project. You are a key piece to all of this and you have something. To, and so the devil's job is, first of all, to make sure you don't know what it is. Then he, his other attack is if you know what it is, he's going to try to get you to go out there and cause flags. <laughs> all right. So I remember uh, and I thank God for my spiritual father. I remember um, almost 30 years ago. Um, back in 1993, uh, the young people at our church, um, had a, had a youth service. And I remember, um, all the young people got up and, and was able to preach. And I remember that was the first time I got the mic and I was able to speak. And that was like 30, yeah, that was 1993. And I remember I got up there. I didn't know no scripture and I just started trying to move the people with, with yelling and screaming. And I remember he, he, you know, he said to me, uh, you know, uh, study to show yourself approved, you know, and I was telling him, you know, I want to be a minister. He was like, you're not ready. You know what he was, you know what he was saying to me? Yeah, you may have, you may have a gift. You may have something, but it's not the time for it. You need a lot of training. You need to develop that thing. So one, so guess what? Even though God has called me to do what I'm doing right now is to teach his word, I still had to go through a season of preparation. This is all connecting to activating your kingdom assignment because many of us may know what God has called us to do, but you went on the field too soon. Uh oh. Oh, Jesus. Please type this stuff in the comments, y'all. I, I want to see some, some comments because this is where a lot of people are wrong. You are definitely probably one. You probably got an amazing talent, but your attitude is bad. You can't work with nobody. And if your attitude is bad, you cannot be on the team because it's hard for you to work with the people who got the other gifts that need your gift so you guys can work together, but you have an a, a attitude issue. So the Holy Spirit has to work on your attitude before he can really activate you. So this is what's happening. You have a lot of people who've been gifted by God. You've been gifted by God. All right. I want to make sure that's clear. You've been gifted by God, but now we need to go back to the Holy Spirit and say, okay, Holy Spirit, I know you've blessed me with these talents. You've blessed me with these gifts. Now I want to use them for your glory. And guess what God will say? Okay. Now I want you to submit to this. I want you to do this. I want you to get in my word. I want you to pray. I want you to go to Bible school. I, Bible school. I want you to study. I want you to fast. And what he will do is he will get your character ready to operate with these gifts. OK, so this is why you see so much problems in the church today is because you have a lot of people who has been on a who's on the football team. They're on the Buffalo Bills team, but no other player like to work with them. <laughs> so they are amazing. They have all the talent, but they are nasty attitudes, nasty with people. And God is like, this person is not ready to be on the team. So sometimes the coach have to remove that player from the team for the sake of the team. For the sake of the team, not because he don't love the person. It's just that this person is causing discord among the team. So when it comes to the body of Christ, guess what? God is, you're going to see, this is a, this is a word from the Lord. You're going to see this year, 2024, mark my words. You're going to see this year that God is going to start removing people from places that they thought they were supposed to be. And he's going to start putting them in places that they need to be. Now, so, so all my pastor friends out there who's watching this, don't start getting upset when people start leaving the, your local churches. It could be the Holy Spirit finally revealing to them that this is not the spot. 
<laughs> I've been here, but this is not the place. This is not the team that my gift is supposed to be activated through. Because remember, guys, this is all about Jesus. And for years, I think we have been trying to build our own churches. We have been trying to build our own uh whatever. <laughs> and that's why we read uh, Psalms 127, except the Lord build the house. Because guess what? There's a lot of laborers that's building houses, you know, and I told the Lord, I said, God, I do not want to labor in vain. I don't want to do all this building. I don't want to do all this work for you. And to get to the day where I stand before you and hear you say, um, I never authorized you to do that. I did authorize you to do this. But because you did not let me heal you, because you did not allow me to sanctify you, because you did not allow my word to get on the inside of you, you pretty much did things emotionally and built your own house. And when you build your own house, guess what? <laughs> the gates of hell can prevail because it's your house. He said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church, against the one he built. But the one you built you may start it and it may not finish because you built it. So sometimes you're going to see this year, you're going to see uh, some people who were doing things. They're going to shut it down and say, you know what? I need to, I need to go back and check. I need to check and make sure that this was the Holy Spirit leading me. I need to check to make sure that this was God telling me. So you have, uh, you're going to have people who was operating in the gifts of the spirit. You will have people who, who call themselves apostles, call themselves prophets, call themselves teachers, pastors, and evangelists, who now is going to have to get back alone with the Lord and say, Lord, I just want to make sure it was you who activated me. <laughs> because if it wasn't you, I am out there evangelizing without the oil, <laughs> without the, without the activation from my heavenly father who has called me to do this. So it, I, I kid you not, I, I promise you, I, when I was walking around the park, it was like I was seeing so much defragmented. This is why the people who are not believers, they're looking at us crazy because you got now more division among us. The reason why the division among us is so great is because you got people who is out of their assignment. All right. So when you get people in their assignment, the body is going to work together. But the issue is you got people who activated themselves. So that player who cost us the game against Denver Broncos, he is a great guy, amazing player. He's been working for, on his craft. He's been working to be on the team. But the problem is he was sent into the game at the wrong time. And now some people said that's a coaching issue. Well, that's fine. But the principle still remain. He shouldn't have been on the field. <laughs> All right. So the fact that he was on the field cost the team. And we see every week and I always share this. And I, if, if any of the Buffalo Bills, if you guys are watching this, you know, I, I, we rooting for you this weekend. We praying that you guys will, will win the division. But I'm going to tell you this. One of the things that has cost our team many a times is penalties. Somebody went off sides. Somebody moved too soon. Somebody did this and it moved the team backwards. And they got to do it again, but they got to do it harder. This is what's happening to the church. There's a lot of penalties going on. And if, if, if we play according to uh, what the Holy Spirit says in his word, before, be, 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 uh, if we play according to what God says in his word, how to do things, how to love. Because trust me, when love is being flowed through, you're going to see that people are going to encourage each other. You're going to see other churches supporting each other. You're going to see other pastors, uh, instead of tearing down another pastor, you're going to see them praying for them because, you know, there is a scripture in Galatians that says he, um, if a brother is overtaken in the fault, he who is spiritual restore such one. Why did it say he who is spiritual? Because everybody ain't spiritual. <laughs> so the ones who spiritual is going to restore such one. The ones who's un, unspiritual, the ones who's undisciplined, the ones who have is not listening to their coach, they're going to attack their own teammates and tear them down when they actually need that teammate to get a Super Bowl. I pray that you guys are getting a revelation to this. So guess what? I need you. I need what is in you. Yes, you're gifted. So there's a couple of kind of people we got to address tonight, because when we go into um, for you kind of fine tuning what your thing is. We got to first like look at this whole big thing. This is Jesus's church, not Nathan's church, not your church. If you're a pastor, this is not your church. So that means 
the Lord is the one who's going to add to the church. We are supposed to go out and evangelize. We are supposed to go out and share the good news, but we can't save anybody. I don't care how many gimmicks and tricks we try. We can't bring people to the church unless the Lord lead them. If we can try, we can do everything we can to, to you know, pass our tracks, do whatever. But guess what? It is the Lord's church. And guess what? Sometimes the Lord does not bring the, the next harvest because he sees that the laborers are laboring in vain. <laughs> we, are, we, we are laboring to build what we want and not what God wants. So in order for us to be activated, we got to go right back to the scriptures. We got to get back to a dependency on the Holy Spirit. I've been sensing that so strong that we got to go back to a dependency on the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit has to lead us and guide us through everything. So when we start talking about the gifts of the Spirit, that has to be, we have to be led by the Spirit. And we have abused the gifts of the Spirit. We have abused things so long that people now is like, listen, y'all crazy. I don't even know if I want to be a part of that team because y'all are crazy. Y'all using, y'all speaking in tongues, but you, you're, you're speaking in tongues, but you're cursing somebody that right when your tongue's finished, you start cursing the person that you were just speaking the tongues to. It's like people are looking at us like, what are y'all doing? Because we, we are just doing stuff and we forgot that this is the Holy Spirit's operation through us. So when the Holy Spirit starts working through us, then you're going to see Jesus's church. Then you're going to see, uh, except the Lord build a house. Except the Lord build the house. The, you ain't going to see laborers laboring in vain. So the reason why people are getting burnt out is because they're laboring in vain. The reason why you're seeing people get burnt out is because they do got a gift, but they're not activated there. And when you're not activating your gift, you're going to be so frustrated. And so when the team needs you and then you say, I don't feel like doing it, you are stop. You are frustrating the whole team. Yes, I know you don't think you're important. So let's let's look at the team again. I just want to I just want to show you this real quick about the team. If you look at your, if you look at the bills, it's funny because you have uh, everybody know Josh Allen, everybody knows Stephon Diggs and some key people. But then there's a guy that many of you may not know. I think a lot of sports fans, you know him. His name is Mitch Morse. Now, some of you may say, well, who is he? Well, he's number 60. Um, and Mitch, if you're watching this, God bless you. But he's number 60. But guess what? The funny thing about it is without Mitch, Josh can't do much. He's the one that gives the ball to Josh for Josh to do his thing. So Josh's gift, which is to lead the team to throw the ball or to hand the ball off, is all affected by Mitch. So if Mitch fumbles the ball, it immediately affects the quarterback and it affects everybody else. So guess what? Yes, everybody else is look, seeing Josh Allen's on his, uh, his jerseys and stuff. But the guy who Josh Allen needs is in front of him. And he is just as important. <laughs> so what I'm trying to show it to you is that you keep thinking that you got to be a quarterback. And this is the problem. Everybody want to be a quarterback, but who's going to be the Mitch? Who's going to be the Mitch? Because the, the quarterback need the Mitches. <laughs> all right. And so, and, and, and all of those players, and I watch this. So I can go to the, and, and then Josh Allen got this great arm to throw the ball. But if he doesn't have Gabe Davis, if he doesn't have a Stefan Diggs, if he doesn't have a uh, Khalil Shakir, if he don't have people to catch it, I don't care how good he throws it, he ain't going to look good. So the people who catch the ball is just as important as the person who's throwing the ball because it's one team, different gifts, different assignments, one team, and they got to know their role. I don't care how much um, Stefan Diggs or whoever want to throw the ball. That's not their assignment. So imagine if every football player got on that field and said, we want to do what we feel like it. We want to do what we feel like doing. We want to do what we feel like. We want to just go by my emotions. That would be a hot mess. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ today. So the, in tonight's uh, uh, teacher, God wants to bring you back tonight to where you go back on your knees and say, Holy Spirit, I'm tired of just doing stuff. I need to make sure that you are activating me in this area. I need to make sure that you have, have, have anointed me to do this because if not, I'm going in my own strength and I don't want to build in vain. I don't want to try to build and help your church out and build in vain. I don't want to try to help you out on the football team and, and, and then cause penalties and flags. And that's what's happening. Many people are saying that we're helping God out. And how can you be helping God out and you blasting your teammates publicly? You're blasting your teammates publicly and you're, you're tearing down your teammates and you're talking about I'm helping God out. This is my calling. That's not your calling. God's, God's, the, the flavor of God's church is love. OK, God is the God who judges. God is the God who's going to build things. He's the one who removed things. You don't have to do that. You're trying to do a role of 
God and God is saying, listen, I need to get my people back focused. I need the quarterback to throw the ball. I need the court. I need the running back to run the ball. I need the offensive line to block. I need the, I need, and watch this. I need the, the people who serve the water to the players to just serve the water. So if, if they are anoint, if they are on that team, they travel with the team. They go with the team just to make sure the players are refreshed with those water bottles. So when there's a timeout, you see all these people run from the sideline and they squirting water in the in in the player's mouth. They're just as important. All these people are important. It is crazy how how many people is 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 making that one team look good. And this is in the mind of Jesus. So when we read Romans chapter 12, that we are many members in one body. This is what he's trying to say. But he need the members to stay in their spot, know where their spot is and work that area because you work in that area is going to help me to work my area. And this is why you don't see the power of God moving like he would like to move amongst his people because you got everybody who is pretty much building their own churches. So Jesus is pretty much saying, okay, until I can get my people back in alignment, until I can let them see that it is one church, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, then they can see themselves as members as members, when they see themselves as members, a part of one body, those members are going to respect each other. Those members are going to find their niche, do that thing that God has called them to do, multiply in the area that he's called you to be in. And that is where you're going to see the true power of God move. So in 2024, what you're going to see is that the blessings of the Lord is going to fall on those who are going to get back into proper alignment. Watch. So if you're like me, not too long ago, this was uh, some years ago, I went before the Lord and I dropped to my face and I said, the Lord, Lord, I just want to do a check to make sure that I am in alignment. I don't want to be doing what I feel like doing, because if you do what you feel like doing, you could be laboring in vain. I pray this is speaking to somebody. I pray this is speaking to you. I want you to put something in the chat because I'm telling you, God is trying to activate you. But guess what? You may have been running, but you have been running and he didn't tell you to run yet. So go back to Romans 12. I need to show you this. So look at this. Romans 12 verse six. Look at this. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, according to the grace that's given to you. He says you're you have a different gift according to the grace given to you. Now watch this. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, verse seven, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. He says, let us wait, meaning just, you know, you, you ministry means serve. It means to serve. OK, so let us wait. Wait. Why, why is he telling me to wait? I mean, don't you want me to go? Because there's a timing for you to get on the field. When you get on the field, give it all your might because it's your time. When is your time? Don't be so on the stand on the sideline talking about, uh, I'm too afraid. No, it's your season. It's your time to be activated. So now you cannot let fear stop you when it's your time. Okay. But the problem is when it ain't our time, that's when we want to get activated. That's why we get so many penalties. That's why the enemy is coming at us and he's hitting us because we are just all over the place. So what I was sensing from the spirit of the Lord is like to tell my people to get back to prayer, get back to listening, get back to hearing, hearing my voice again. And God is going to tell you, not there, here. This is where you're supposed to be. But Lord, I want to be here. I, I know you want to, want to, but this is where I need you to be. This is where I've called you to be. So let me so let me bring it into terms where you understand it. So there was a man by the name of Saul in Acts chapter eight. Many of you may know the story. This man was going around persecuting Christians, feeling like this is the thing I want to do. He felt like he gave himself an assignment, y'all. <laughs> he gave himself an assignment that if he find anybody on this way, meaning the way of Jesus, he says, I'm going to kill them. OK, so Paul Saul, I'm sorry gave himself an assignment. He gave himself an assignment. So on his assignment, he ran into Christ Jesus, fell off his beast, and then Christ gave him his assignment. <laughs> so you see, you can have an assignment. You can, you're, you think your assignment is to go and expose everybody. You think that's your assignment until you have a true encounter with Jesus. And when you have a true encounter with Jesus, then Jesus is going to uh, knock you off of your high and then let you realize, oh, your assignment is here. <laughs> and many people are doing things because they angry with somebody. Many people have left churches because they mad at somebody. Talk about the Lord let, told me to leave. He did not tell you to leave. You left because you were mad at somebody. That is emotion. <sighs> Lord, help me, Jesus.
help us, Jesus. I'm, I'm feeling the presence of the Lord because I do sense God is telling people, you, listen, y'all all over the place. I'm coming back for my people and my people is just doing whatever. You cannot just make yourself a prophet. You cannot just make yourself an apostle. You cannot just make yourself a pastor. You cannot just make yourself a teacher. You cannot just make yourself an evangelist. And I'm talking about the, the, the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter four, which we will be talking about. You can't just wake up and say, I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be that. I'm just going to do this. No, it don't work like that. You have to be activated. Because with the activation comes the anointing to do that thing for the team. OK, so if you get that, that's when you're going to feel the power of God. And I'm telling you right now, I know what it's like to activate myself into something. And then you're doing something and you're like, wait a minute. Mm -mm. I don't feel the oil. I'm. It's a good thing, but I don't feel like God is with me. Have any, have any of you ever did that before where you felt it was God until you got until you went further and you realized oh, this wasn't it? Hey, I don't don't be mad. Many of us have done that. But guess what? That's why we need to repent. Repent means to turn. So repentance is so huge because sometimes you got to repent and say, Lord, I think that was me. I think that was me. I think that was me that called myself an evangelist. I think that was me that called myself a pastor. I think that was me that called myself an apostle. I think that was me because I just wanted people to know that I'm somebody. And guess what? While you still doing the thing that you felt you were supposed to do, then you go have an encounter with Jesus. And then Jesus go say, um, let me blind you for a few days, Paul. And let me change your name because you're you if you if you keep that name Saul, you go still have some of them old names. So let me just change your name because I, I want you to completely get redirected to your new assignment. And then when I change you, then I must speak to you and tell and tell you what you are supposed to do. Now, this is what I have plans for you to build in my church, not the thing that you wanted to do. And I can tell you right now, there was many things I wanted to do for the Lord. And God was like, mm mm. That's not it. So in, in my close, there was a man in the Old Testament. Many of you know him. He he was um, considered, you know, a man after God's own heart. This man says, I mean, out of everybody, I would be I was I, I, I I'm like, OK, yes, God would honor this. This man said, I'm going to build God a house. I'm going to build God a house. And guess what God said to him through the prophet? You are not going to build me a house. You have too much blood on your hands, but your son is going to build me a house. Wait a minute. I don't understand that. So, but God, but, but David feel like doing it. He felt like doing it. That was, he had a good heart. He wanted to do something good for God, but it wasn't his assignment. <laughs> it was Solomon's assignment. And so the prophet had to put some order because guess what? David was about to labor in vain. I pray this is a blessing, y'all. Oh, my God. I pray this is a blessing. And many of us have built God a house that he never ordained us to build. And that is why we have to start this revival by by uh, by coming back to a place where we're saying, Lord, I need to make sure. So tonight I am here to encourage each and every one of you. The first thing you're going to do when you when we get off here is you're going to go into prayer. You're not going to go on social media. You're not going to go and call sister so and so and brother so and so. You're going to go and connect with God in prayer. And I want you to ask a very hard but real question, because remember, guys, Jesus is coming soon. This is not the time to be just saying, no, I'm because guess what? He may actually tell you, you are going the wrong direction. And, and trust me, I don't know about you, but I'm actually more, I would actually respect a person who will admit that they're going wrong and then turn and go right than a person who is too prideful to it to turn around and repent. So again, I'm glad that I had that opportunity uh, some years back to actually repent and say, you know, what? I, I'm, I'm going in a direction. And then when I realized that it's not where God wanted me to be, I'm thankful that he allowed me through his mercy and his grace to say, wait a minute, you got to make a U-turn back. And when I made the U-turn back, I felt the peace of God. I felt the power of God. And some of you may have to go back to your churches. <laughs> I know you don't want to hear it. Some of you may have to go back to the place you ran from. Uh, you know, uh, so, you know, you, you have, uh, oh my God, I can go down many, many roads, but you know, you, you have Sarah's handmaid at Hagar, who, uh, after Sarah mistreated her, Hagar took her, ba her boy and she got up and left. Read Genesis. It was, it's in there. That girl went and was like, I'm gone. I'm leaving this crazy, this crazy woman. And she leaves with her son and an angel met Hagar on the way and say, go back and submit. 
<laughs> and Hagar did. She went back. So let's let's give God praise for Hagar. So we need some Hagar's here who's going to say, OK, I left because this person hurt me. I started this ministry because this person said something uh, um, that hurt me. I gave myself a title because they did not give me a title. So I'm going to title myself. And it wasn't Jesus. So what we want to do is go back to prayer, guys. I really feel so strong from the Lord for us to go back to prayer and let's ask God, where do I fit in your building project? Where did you activate me? Because it's in that area that your joy is going to be full. It's in that area that you're going to have the peace. It's in that area that you're going to experience the joy of the Lord. So right now, I'm going to ask you before we go, I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes and we're just going to... I just want you right now to just meditate and just talk to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, show me, show me clearly. Show me clearly where you have me to be. I don't want to move another step if you did not lead me to that step. I don't want to go to a place if you did not have me go there, God. I don't want to act like I'm somebody in this in this area and you did not call me for that god i want to be right where you called me to be so right now i just want you to bow your hands and just begin to just talk to the lord just ask the lord lord please help me lord help me god help me speak to me give me clarity lord god give me clarity give me clarity lord god i don't want to just activate myself i don't want to cause any more penalties to the team god lord god i want to be the man that you called me to be i want to be the woman that you called me to be Begin to ask God, Lord, where do I fit in your building project? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, just take this time and just, and just let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you.